there are any number of factors that could derail it. Ultimately, what will drive the market is the sustained growth in earnings and the valuation. I don't believe that the valuation is extremely expensive right now. At the same time, nor is it extremely cheap. So there are pockets in the market which is, which is cheaper than the rest. And there are pockets in the market that are growing faster than the others. So I think the job of an investor is to identify these spots of higher growth or lower valuation and invest accordingly. The market as a whole is just an average. So that, that's a job of uh, an investor. Definitely a delay in revive, industrial revival, that's, that's a risk. There is, you know, uh, continued, uh, you know, delay in further reforms, in economic reforms, especially ones that need political, more, a greater degree of political consensus. That's certainly a greater risk. Um, a sharp rise in interest rates in, in the de more developed markets. These are certainly the risks that one, th one can think of as, as things that can derail an Indian uh, stock market recovery. I'd rather look at it from a much longer term point. You know, it's one year prediction, really nobody can get it right. And if you do get it right, you're probably lucky. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the stock market has grown at an average of about 16 to 16 and a half percent per annum over the last so many years. And it's not a coincidence that the earnings growth has also been somewhere between 16 and 16 to 17 percent during this period. So there is a strong long-term correlation between earnings growth and the stock market return. And this is, this is true for any industry, this is true for any stock. So rather than focus on the next one year, I think the investor should focus on the next five. Right? That's a better way to look at it. If you believe that India's economy can grow at sustainably at between 6.5% to 7%, it's logical for us to expect that uh, you know nominal GDP will be somewhere about 12, 12 to 12 and a half percent. If the overall economy grows at 12 to 12 and a half percent, um, industry and services, which are definitely um, the stock market is correlated to these two sectors more than agriculture. Industry and services we can expect will grow at one percentage point more, about 13 and a half percent or so. If the Thousands and thousands of entities listed, unlisted, all of them put together are growing at 13.5%. The Nifty, which is presumably the more efficient amongst the lot, can be expected to grow at maybe 1% more than that. So starting with the assumption that India's economy can sustainably grow at between 65 to 7%, it's logical for us to expect that the overall stock market returns will be roughly double that. But it doesn't go up in a straight line. It has its own, uh, you know, meanderings. So let's let's not be keen to predict the movement over the next six months or next one year. I think a long-term trend is far more important. A good way to start is to look at the sectors that have underperformed. The industrials have certainly underperformed in the last uh, few years, and therefore it's it's a good place to start looking. Uh, Consumer space, yes, will continue to grow, but the valuations in the consumer space are not, not really favorable in most cases. I think financials will continue to grow, but again, we have to be careful about which company we choose because some of these valuations are definitely above long-term averages. So um, I think industrials, infrastructure-linked companies will, will, will uh, lead the earnings growth rally. That's my expectation. In a country like India, it's inevitable that it grows because the, the state of infrastructure here calls for massive investments and therefore it's, it's inevitable that it grows. But you can't choose all companies. You have to choose companies that efficiently manage their capital. You have to choose companies where the valuation is not exorbitantly expensive and so on and so forth. So the bottom line is the, the parameters are the same whether you invest in an infrastructure company or you invest in an FMCG company. Choose companies that efficiently manage their capital and try not to overpay for what we buy. It's really that simple.